Hello and welcome back. We are on the third version of the mini map project. So in the last video, we got the map imported and set up and scaled. And now we need to figure out how to move the map around in correlation with our player movement. So over on the layout, let's click on the level layout. Let's make us a new sprite. So double click and go down to sprite. I'm just gonna insert them off to the side. I'm gonna go into the size. Let's make this 32 by 32. And I'm gonna put the origin right in the middle. Turn my grid off. So origin right in the middle. And you can do whatever you want with this. I'm just going to, I'm gonna make me a quick little circle, fill it with, uh, I'll just do like a blue color, just so I can see what's going on. With my pencil, just, uh, just something to reference visually on screen. Okay, if I zoom in and I can just throw this on to the layout, if I play it, uh, it's nowhere near where our player is. That's because I have it in the viewport, not on the actual layer. So if I put it right next to our player and I play, okay, there it is. With that selected, I'm just gonna rename this map uh, cam. It's going to be the camera object of our map. And we're not actually going to use this in the final product, but this is going to help us understand how to do the math for our map movement. Okay, let's go over to our event sheet. And in the every tick event, I want to add an action and go to our map cam object. And we're going to set the position. I want to calculate the width of the full layout, the 2560 by 2560 size, and then subtract the location of our player. So when our player is moving, every tick or every frame of the game, that value is going to change. And by subtracting our player's position from the layout width, it's going to put this object at the opposite position on the layout of where our player is at all times. So for the X, get our layout width and then subtract our player dot x and then do the same thing for the y this will be the layout height minus our player dot y so if we play that and we see our little uh, object there wherever i go that object places itself at the opposite coordinates of wherever our player is at all times. So in our code, what I want to do is have the map act like that object is, this blue object that I created. Okay, let's exit out of that. And with this action selected, I'm going to hit D on the keyboard and that will disable it. It just puts a line through it and grays it out. That just means that it will not read this code at all, but we still have it there so that we can see it if we need to reference it in our math later. Let's save if you haven't saved already. I want to get this position and put it in a variable. So let's click on our player and go over to the properties and edit instance variables. And I'm gonna add a new instance variable. So I'm gonna call this, uh, let's say MMPOS x for the x value so that's the mini map position x and then i'll do m m p o s y okay i'll exit out of that and in every tick i want to update this value of these instance variables to read out what we did with this object so let's add an action get our player scroll down to variables and set the value of mm position x two and let's just do what we did up here let's get the layout width minus the player dot x and then add an action get our player scroll down to set value get mm pos y and do the layout height minus player dot y okay now we can set the position of our map and reference these values. So let's add an action to this every tick event, grab our map object, and we want to set the position. 
And in our X coordinate, I want to place the map in a location in reference to both the canvas map mask object and our player's position. And then we need to also multiply that by our scale to make sure that everything is the right size and in the right position every frame of the game. Okay, stay with me. We're gonna start off by getting the canvas map mask objects width. So get the canvas map mask object dot width, and then we're going to subtract another equation. So in parentheses, I wanna get the player's position and subtract that value from the width of the map canvas. So let's get our canvas map mask dot width again, and then we'll subtract that and let's put another parentheses to do another equation inside this and get those instance variables from our player object. So player dot minimap position x and let's multiply that times our map dot map scale in parentheses for that equation and then another in parentheses for the start of this equation. Is that confusing enough? Okay, so in code, just like in algebra, we do what is in the innermost parentheses first. So we have the player's position, x, which is actually this equation right here. It's the layout width minus player x position, and that's updated every tick. So whatever that value is times, I put a plus there, I don't know why, uh, that should be an asterisk for multiplied by our map.map scale, which is that instance variable we created for the 13.67%. So whatever that equation is, that value is going to be subtracted from this value. And then this value will subtract this new value from that. So let's do the same thing for the Y. I'm just going to copy this and then come down here and paste it and change width to height, change this width to height, and change this variable from x to y, and that should be it. Now we're going to still run into an issue here. Let's go and play this, and I'll show you what we have. You see that the map is moving in accordance to where our player is moving. So if I go down, the map in the circle is moving up. And if I go right, the map is moving left. The problem is when I get to the edge, we're off. I should be on this edge right here. But on the other side of the map, I'm that same distance over the edge over here. So there is a difference occurring both on the X and the Y plane. As you can see, I go over this edge and don't quite reach the other edge on the Y. Okay, so this part was actually really confusing to me. I hope that this makes sense from my explanation. But what we are missing is the scale from 2560 by 2560 down to 13.67%, which is how we got the size of our map. So if we multiply the size of our layout by that 13%, we get that 350. So I'm going to subtract that value from each one of these equations. And instead of entering it twice, I'm going to create a global variable to plug that number in. So I'm gonna right click and add global variable. And I'm just gonna call this uh, pixel diff for pixel difference. And I'm gonna say 350. Now I'm gonna move it down because I'm only gonna need it from this spot down. And if I go in here and I subtract that 350 from our width before we subtract the player X, we should get a lot closer to the correct positioning. So I'm gonna put a parentheses around our layer width and then go inside that parentheses and subtract our new global variable. So now we have layout width minus the pixel diff, which is 350, whatever that value comes out to be, then we subtract the player X. And then we can go in here and do the same thing. I'm going to subtract that variable and then put a parentheses around that part of the equation. So now when we go back in, we are a lot closer. Now, 
this is where uh, I couldn't really remember how I got to where I was. And instead of spending a whole lot more time on trying to figure out why it uh, works on one end and not the other, I played around with it. And this is my best advice is when you get into a project like this, if something seems to kind of be working, but not all the way working, you just keep playing with some of these values until it does. And that's what I ended up doing. So the difference here is actually, instead of 350, if we change this to 365, for this particular scale and this particular project and this particular layout, 365 puts us in a much better position on that outer left and top side. And if we go to the right, we are the same amount over, it would appear, as we are on the left and uh, on the bottom or on the top. So you can play around with these values until it matches what you need in your particular project. One last little thing I want to do just so that we can really see what's going on here. When we get to the edge like this, we kind of just, we, we lose what's happening up here. Uh, if that works for you, that's fine. But for me, I would like to give our map a border. So I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to go into the layout and on the map icons layer, make sure that it is visible and unlocked. And I'm going to double click on the layout and let's scroll down and get another drawing canvas object. Let's insert that. I'm going to click to insert it and I'll zoom in and make sure that it is up in the very top left corner, zero, zero for the position. And then for the size, I want the full size of 1280 comma 720. That covers our full viewport. Same size as our other canvas. And then with that selected, I'm going to rename this uh, canvas underscore map border. And then over in the event sheet, the same way we made this ellipse on our canvas map object, I'm going to add an action, go into our new canvas map border object, and I'm going to go down. Before we did fill ellipse, this time I'm going to do outline ellipse. So for the X, I'm going to do the same thing we did up here. We want the center of this border ellipse to be in the middle of that circle. So it's 200 pixels wide and half of that is 100. That would be in the center of the circle and it's 25 pixels in from the left. So 125 for the X and 125 for the Y as well. So for our radius, I want this to be larger than the circle. So instead of 100, I'm going to say, let's give it a four pixel wide or four pixel thick border. So for the radius, we'll say the 100 plus the four is 104. Same for the Y. So that gives us four pixels on all sides. And then for the thickness, uh, I'm going to go with five. If we go a thickness of five, it will slightly cover the inside of the border ellipse. So there won't be any space between the map mask ellipse and the border. So I'm going to get that same gold border color that we used in the previous projects. Since I already deleted the map border object from this project file, I went ahead and looked up what the values for that gold color were from uh, our previous projects. However, it was done in RGB values from 0 to 255. In this expression, the RGBA goes from 0 to 100. So instead of trying to do the math on that, I'm going to use an expression RGBA EX255. And that's going to need some parentheses and some values. And those values in between parentheses are going to be 165 for the red, comma, 140 for the green, comma, 55 for the blue. And because we're using this expression, the alpha is already automatically set at full value of 255. So this will give us that gold color. I'm going to hit done and I'll push play. And now we have this gold border that 
covers our ellipse. There's no space in between the border and the map ellipse. And we can move around. And in fact, I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to select my map cam object. And I'm gonna leave it in the project just for reference, but I'm gonna untick initially visible. We already have it striked out, so the code doesn't take place, but the object still exists. I'm gonna leave it there for now. And then I'll play again. We don't have it there. So uh, we can move around. We have a border. Even when we go into the black area up here, we still kind of see, you know, this is where our map is. And that is how we do this kind of map. All right, that actually finishes everything up. I know that part of this gets a little complicated. I hope that between what I explained and what you see on screen that some of it made sense. The hardest part about making this project for a tutorial video is that these specific numbers and percentages work with the project that we made, this layout. So if you have another project that you're trying to make a map for, chances are it's not gonna be this size. So you're going to have to use these calculations. We figured out what size we wanted, then we figured out what scale that was in reference to how big our layout was or how big our area of play is. So that is going to wrap up this mini map series. I hope that it has helped some of you out. Make sure you're saving all your projects. All right, that's gonna be it for me. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please go down there and do so now. Hit that thumbs up, show your support. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.